Good afternoon, this is the latest video update on this Sunday afternoon. Continue to watch Typhoon Bolivin and Tembin, which has now been upgraded to a Typhoon early last night. You see their respective locations here in the advanced on the infrared image, and you can see here Bolivin are now about to make landfall here in Okinawa, and also Tembin right over here, uh, south of China. It's starting to turn east, uh, east, south, east in response to the influence being exerted uh, by Bolivin to its uh, to its northeast. So we begin with Typhoon Tembin, uh, last located approximately 350 kilometers southeast of Hong Kong, or about 670 kilometers southwest of Taipei, Taiwan. Maximum sustained winds are now at 130 kilometers per hour, with gusts of up to 185 kilometers per hour. And as I said, the system is now moving south southeastward at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. Um, current warnings from the Central Weather Bureau is now they are now issued uh, sea typhoon warning for the uh, for the waters south and west of Taiwan in in response to the approaching typhoon. They also continue to issue extremely heavy rain, particularly along the southern portions of the country, for the possible possibility of rains coming from the outer rain bands and also from the enhancement by Typhoon Tembin. Meanwhile, the China Meteorological Administration is still issuing blue warnings across the province of Guangdong, especially along the coastal areas, for the threat of um, gusty winds and the occasional rains, also uh, um, high waves. Hong Kong Observatory also actually issuing standby signal number one. You can see in this latest infrared image, the eye of the of Tembin is actually partially eroded and degraded in the past three hours. We expect some dry air is actually being entrained into the system. Nevertheless, we, s we are still seeing some cold cloud tops along the eastern portion of the eastern portions of, of the of the circulation. And again, still seeing that the uh, symmetrical central dense overcast and also some very good outflow as well. Uh, the system has moved away from land. Uh, farther away from from China, so much of the r heavy rains are now situated south of uh, of China, but still some actually some outer rain bands and some occasional showers being reported here in Guangdong and even into um, Hong Kong. Now, speaking of the dry air, you can see in this latest microwave image, we don't have that eye wall anymore. We showed that eye wall yesterday, if you remember. Now we are seeing some darker blue lines on the north and northeastern side of the system which could indicate some dry air being entrained into the system and again the eye wall has um, has disappeared which which uh, could uh, mean some weakening temporary weakening um, in terms of the overall conditions this region is still favorable for for the uh, for intensification so we expect Tembin to remain a typhoon up to landfall here in Taiwan and uh, radar from Guangdong again showing you the lack of eye now um, in terms of radar again a lack of activity across the north and eastern parts of the system which could again indicate that uh, dry air intrusion into the circulation now as I said Tembin is still hundreds of kilometers away from Taiwan but it is enhancing some rain showers across uh, southern Taiwan and even into central areas and also some rains possible across the islands north of Luzon as seen here on the, the radar. Obviously the rains will only uh, get heavier as Tembin moves slowly uh, towards this region. Again expected to make landfall here in Taiwan as early as tomorrow afternoon. And you can see in this latest forecast from the agencies very good agreement in terms of the short term forecast and again most of them forecasting a second landfall here in Taiwan as a typhoon probably near the city of Hengchun by uh, tomorrow afternoon or into tomorrow evening depending on the speed of the system um, again as a strong typhoon category 2 actually being uh, being forecasted by JTWC with winds of uh, uh, 150 kilometers per hour or more so expect uh, another stormy conditions uh, in the next two days unfortunately for Taiwan and not only strong winds but also the threat of heavy rains will continue uh, through the next two to three days the system will track parallel the Taiwanese coast along the eastern side so we got that inflow uh, bands hitting the mountains across the counties of Taitung and Hualien those counties if you remember have been devastated um, as the system moved as the system made landfall a few days ago and the system will weaken into a tropical storm 
as it moves northward, uh, farther away from Taiwan, and could actually make landfall in eastern China by the latter part of uh, this week. Before I uh, forget, I also want to mention the threats it could pose across the islands north of Luzon, particularly across the Batanes group of islands. Now the system will track north of it, so we could expect some strong winds and also some heavy rains being uh, could be could be uh, impacted um, in the silence and also actually for northern Luzon and for the threat of, of enhancement of south and southwest monsoon albeit uh, weekly. At the five day outlook from JMA again you can see the system tracking over Taiwan uh, moving parallel to the east and then brushing uh, I'm sorry uh, moving northward and could move near Shanghai uh, by as early as Wednesday or into Thursday and again could track towards uh, towards northeastern China by the latter part of this week. J, uh, JDWC actually forecasting a much uh, earlier landfall here in eastern China um, by as early as uh, Wednesday evening as a tropical storm. The system will weaken eventually to a tropical storm as it encounters cooler waters here in the east uh, East China Sea. For for right now, the threat again remains for uh, for southern Taiwan, particularly here in Hengchun, and also for the islands north of Luzon, for the possibility of typhoon force winds, and heavy rains that could begin as early as tomorrow e uh, tomorrow morning, peaking at thir uh, uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon or into the evening hours as the system makes landfall, and also interests along eastern China should keep monitoring the system, even though it weakens, even though uh, it will have weakened a tropical storm. Could still be could still pose a threat uh, across these areas uh, in terms of strong winds and heavy rain. Now moving on to the other system, continue to watch Typhoon Bola. We're now about to make landfall here in Okinawa, last week approximately 60 kilometers east southeast of the Japanese island. Maximum sustained winds have increased to 185 kilometers per hour with gusts of up to 260 kilometers per hour, according uh, to JMA. Uh, the system is currently moving northwestward at 15 km per hour and you can see this latest visible image that the pinhole eye, very small eye, is still remaining uh, despite the eye wall replacement cycle that has been going on the past 24 hours. Again, the system is nearing Okinawa and we are starting to see reports of winds, uh, sustained winds of up to 85 km per hour with some stations gusting well over 120 km per hour already. Um, moreover, uh, pressure in this region uh, continuing to drop like a rock. Naha Airport rec uh, reported pressure of 963 millibars. The system is still uh, a couple of hours away from landfall. In fact, JMA for um, analyzing the pressure to be around 910 uh, millibars. So this puts Bolivin the most intense typhoon for this year in 2012. The second was Typhoon Guchol, remember, a few months back. Now, in terms of the infrared image, the, again, the system continues to undergo eye wall replacement cycle. Um, we are still seeing warm cloud tops, although some cold cloud tops relatively along the southeastern quadrant of the system. We are also seeing dry air intrusion, particularly be, uh, around the, the north, uh, north side of the system. And this dry air entrainment could also be um, attributed due to the large size of the system. We see could uh, this large circulation has a uh, greater chance of sucking in dry air uh, to its north and nor east I'm sorry north and west uh, of the system which which could continue weakening the system as it, as it moves um, northwestward uh, either way the system remains a powerful category 4 typhoon according to JTWC and again a very strong typhoon according to JMA because of that, storm warnings, high waves warnings, storm surges continue to uh, be up across Okinawa and the rest of the islands, and even high waves warning extending as far north as Kyushu again, owing to the large circulation of them uh, of Bolivin. And also, we have Kadena Air Base now issuing T Core One caution, which basically means uh, winds of tropical storm force are now uh, impacting the uh, the regions need to to really hunker down if you're still outside and prepared so um, now looking at the radar image from Okinawa again showing you the well-defined eye very small eye uh, being depicted here on radar and also the presence of multiple concentric eye wall that is actually uh, somewhat 
contributing to the weakening that we've seen in the past 12 hours in terms of the structure of the system. Also, this concentric eye wall could mean multiple wind, uh, wind maxima, meaning multiple points of, of the maximum uh, area of, of where the winds, uh, winds are. So um, you could see even in this in this bands of heavy rain, we could already see, you could probably see typhoon force winds impacting the o Okinawa Island in the next uh, hour or so, despite the eye still being far away. Again, the system will forecast uh, is forecast to make landfall here in Okinawa, north of Naha, um, in the next two, uh, three hours. Here, again, uh, expecting winds of uh, 180 kilometers per hour, sustained with gusts of up to 240. So very damaging winds, despite the uh, the structure of the system uh, looking poorly uh, at the moment. Aside from the winds, you can also see in the radar image that bands of heavy rain moving across Okinawa. Some could have the potential to drop 20 to 30 millimeters of rain in an hour. And some stations here in Okinawa actually reported around 50 millimeters. Taito Islands east of Okinawa actually reported 100 to 150 millimeters in the past 24 hours. Remember, they also got hit uh, when the system moved south of the region there. Now, we as for Okinawa, the system is moving uh, slowly to the northwest, so expect rains of 100 to 200 millimeters uh, throughout, the ni uh, throughout tonight and into tomorrow. And again, uh, typhoon force winds will begin in the next hour or so and will last throughout the evening hours. Probably the peak winds, the strongest of winds, will hit Okinawa sometime around uh, 6 p.m. local time. Uh, and could last uh, to uh, to around 9 p.m. So three hours of very intense winds and tropical storm force winds of more than 65 kilometers per hour will not end until Monday morning or tomorrow morning. So uh, a very long ordeal, unfortunately, um, for Okinawa. Now, after making landfall here in Okinawa, the system is forecast to continue weakening as it moves into cooler waters to the north. Uh, it will remain a typhoon uh, prior to landfall here in the Korean Peninsula and will actually pass within 150 kilometers west of Jeju Island uh, by Tuesday noon or Tuesday afternoon as a Category 2 typhoon will pass um, west of Seoul by Tuesday afternoon as a Category 2 or perhaps a Category 1 before it makes landfall here in North Korea. Now the system will also begin to accelerate as it comes uh, to interact with the, uh, the easterlies here in northern Asia. So expect the system to move quickly across North Korea, passing near Pyongyang by Tuesday evening, and also rapidly weakening to a tropical storm as it encounters rough terrain, probably remaining tropical storm as it crosses into northern northeastern China by Wednesday morning, and could begin extra tropical transition uh, thereafter. But for now, we are watching the system about to make landfall here in Okinawa. It's a very strong typhoon. Please do not take this storm lightly. And also for those of you living across uh, the western portions of, of South Korea, you need to monitor this system as uh, even though it is weakening and moving rapidly by this time, it could still bring the threat of very strong winds and heavy rain across the entire Korean Peninsula and also the threat for high waves. And um, continue to check out the latest official warnings from your country's weather bureau, particularly JMA, and also for those inside the airbase, you have Kadena, the weather uh, support a uh, weather site for the latest T Corps and also latest updates uh, from them. Now, also, if you are in southern China, continue to monitor the system and prepare. If you haven't done so already, as is uh, Tembin, the other typhoon, is unfortunately about to make second landfall here in southern Taiwan tomorrow evening. Stay safe, guys. Bye.